Yeah, well, the first thing I would tell uh, anybody is um, never underestimate who you're meeting. You know, it could be someone younger than you, it could be a peer, it could be your younger brother's girlfriend, because what you don't know is in three or four years where that person might be. So you really need to, your, your social skills, and by that I'll mean just opening a door, you know, those kind of skills, but, you know, taking an interest and in learning how to pull out of people what they're interested in, uh, so that when you're sitting in the future with a director or an ad agency, whoever's the decision maker, you know, you're sitting with, if their hobby is geology, then go read a book on geology or go read an article or something so you can say, hey man, blah, blah, I heard they dug up this, man, you know anything about this? And get them engaged in their life. Uh, you don't, selling yourself is very often a lot about getting someone to f like you, you know, and, and I'm lucky in that um, my undergraduate degree was a bachelor, a BA degree. So I got to take physics and astronomy, things I was just interested in. And I'm going to say, man, in terms of getting work, that information and interest, having developed it a little bit, has gotten me more work than whether I can tell them about chord changes in Bach and Bach. They don't care about that. What they care about is, is the music going to work for what they want? And do they like working with you? You know, again, unless you're Frank Zappa, who could be pretty aggressive in life if he wanted to, because he was Frank Zappa, and people wanted him, and they wanted to be kicked in the teeth by the guy, you know? I mean, that's, that was Frank. And he was pretty mild about it compared to others out there, but I would say that that, um, that would be my first advice, is don't underestimate getting people to open up to you. In a certain sense, you know, treat them like you're on a date with them. And you know where that wants to go, you know? <laughs> so think of it that way. It's not about you, it's about them, ultimately. Um, but second, on the more practical part, yeah, I mean, the approach I took to it, and I'm gonna tell you, this is the saddest part, not about what I did, but every composer I've met who does this has a different story. There is no, this is the curse and the blessing. There is no, sidewalk you have to walk on that's going to take you. There is no yellow brick road, you know, and there is no end to the road, you know. It's not like you've made it when you've crossed this brick or, or this one. It's just the journey, you know, the corniness of it all. The journey is what it's about and enjoying that process. But there is no way you have to go to get there, but that can be daunting to some because it's like, unlike a doctor, you know, get out of school, go intern at a place, go do this, and then this is what you do. You start a practice and you get some patience and you're fine, hopefully. But in our profession, uh, our field, uh, there's no one way to anything. So the good part is you get to be yourself the whole journey, you know, um, and you get to create your next step. But you also are responsible to convince the culture you live in that they need you. Because to them, they don't understand why they do. They're not interested in why even pursuing that. So once you show them that, though, it can happen. So, you know, go knock on, start locally, knock on the door. If you're a composer and you want to hear your music, go to your church or someone's church and talk to the choir director. They always sing music, you know. Find people who do stuff and go talk to them and get them to do some, some stuff. And it, it'll, if you're persistent, I really believe it has always worked out. Or in the case of some of my friends who are way above me in that food chain, they just were doing what they did. And I mean, my memory of Terrence Blanchard telling me, he's sitting, he gets hired to be on, in Spike Lee's dad, who was writing the music for Spike back then, in the orchestra. So Terrence is being the trumpet player, scale, you know. He's a recording artist. He doesn't need this. He just wants, you know, you're learning. You know, he's approaching it like this is another experience. They take a break. He's doodling on the piano a tune he was working on for his next record. Spike hears it and says, what's that? Terrence says, well, it's a song I'm working on. Spike says, can I put it in the movie? Terrence says, okay. He says, well, can you do it for strings and trumpet? Sure comes back to his house, calls our common mentor, Roger Dickerson, saying, how do I write for strings? <laughs> you know, what do I do? And he's like, go with your instincts. He arranges it, writes it. 
I don't know, six months later, Spike calls and says, I want you to work on the music on my next film. Terrence is like, oh, sure, you want me to be in the band or what? He goes, no, I want to give you the score. It's Malcolm X, you know. So he goes from jazz trumpet player in a session to scoring Malcolm X being in the film, and that has been, what, 15, 20 years, and he's done every one of Spike's films since. So you don't ever know what's gonna, what it's going to be, but whatever it is, do your thing, do what your best, be personable, talk to people, take an interest, and just soak up everything.